Good evening, good evening to you. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Nationwide at 5. It's time for the nation's business. I'm Ricardo Brooks. And I'm Siobhan Campbell. We're turning our attention to some flooding in the Little London Division and fears uh, sparked by that. Yeah, Political representatives in Westmoreland are expressing concern about the potential health risks associated with flooding in the division. The flooding follows the passage of Tropical Storm Raphael earlier this week. Of course, the country began experiencing the effects of Raphael on Tuesday, and residents report that the water didn't start rising until dawn on Wednesday. They say the rapidly spread the waters rather rapidly spread across several communities, submerging pit latrines and backyard graves. It was twelve feet in high twelve feet high in some areas. The council for the Little London Division is Ian Miles. There is a number of graves here, and this is a serious cause of concern. We've had this right throughout um, the community, and that in itself speaks to different health hazards and health issues that can arise from uh, this flooding. I know the municipal corporation would have distanced itself from home burial and, uh, you know, would not have been given permission, especially in these areas which are water prone and flood prone areas. But again, I want to say they need to be more stringent in their approach in terms of monitoring uh, what's taking place because with this flooded water, with the sewage and uh, the different um, septic and the, the graves, then that in itself for me is concerning. That's Ian Miles. He's a councillor for the Little London Division, member of Parliament for West West Westmoreland. Morland Wilson led an assessment team to the area. He says ninety percent of homes were flooded and farmers had lost animals and crops. Uh, we have gone through McNeil and where we have seen about ninety percent of the homes are underwater, which is very tragic. We have seen where persons have suffered significant losses. Um, the farmers. I've seen a few farmers trying to rescue their goats um, and animals. We have seen as well where you have persons are trying to relocate um, because the water has come up so high. Um, since the rain has stopped, that is when the flooding starts. And it's basically a flash flood because minute by minute, um, hour by hour, we have seen the water rising. Morlan Wilson there, the MP for West Westmoreland. He says drains were cleaned prior to the passage of the storm. In the meantime, the Chief Public Health Inspector for the parish, Steve Morris, has confirmed that it's monitoring the situation in Little London. Morris cautions residents against venturing into floodwaters barefooted to reduce the risk of injury or contracting disease. The parish health department also says the vector control team is part of that monitoring. Uh, Mr. Morris joins us now, as well as the councillor for Little London, Ian Miles. Gentlemen, good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? To all the listeners. Doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Morris, let me start with you. What exactly is the nature of the concern that the, the parish's health department has? All right. They, they Concern the department has, has to do with um, disease, disease outbreaks. Um, when, whenever we have studies like this, there has, has to be a concern because, as was reported, um, latrines have been flooded out and graves are in the area. I mean, we have, when, in regards to the graves, I visited the area just today and I'm, and I did see 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 um, that in it happening. In fact, I saw some graves looking very fresh, like they were recently there, you know. And a few years ago, we have reached out to the parish council to blacklist these areas for home burial. You know, we have submitted a, a letter to them and asking them not to recommend, not to approve any burials in these areas because this is not the first time this area has been flooded out. It's a low-lying area. It's close to the to the, the river, and so whenever they, they, there's a overflow it comes right back into the community it goes all the way to the main road in fact um what we saw today it had receded from the main road and it is kind of receding but it is the water is still high because um i reached a, a point where i did not take my vehicle into the water because it was looked so, so deep you know so it is a concern the health situation is a concern um as I said, we have been monitoring it. My the vector control team went in yesterday. They monitored. They looked at what was happening. Um, the water table. The water is too high for us to go in and say we're doing oil in to present mosquitoes. 
even though the residents are complaining about mosquitoes. And so we'll be going in just to do adult decider to try to re- reduce the, the adult population of mosquitoes in the, in the community. So hopefully if it had not gone, done, been done this evening, we will be doing that by tomorrow. So that is already on, on, um, on the, our agenda. And Steve Morris, what exactly is the health department looking on the watch for in that area in terms of potential vectors? All right, folks, we, we are coming, we are still within a dengue outbreak. So um, this is still a concern to us. So we're, we're trying to ensure that um, we, we don't see a lot of monster breeding in, the, in this area. So that is our, our first um, and, uh, uh, concern in terms of that. Um, leptospirosis is also something that we have been seeing. We have getting back some positive results um, since last year with leptospirosis. And so that is also a concern for us. And so we we have been we have been on the ear. I, I know um, our health education officer did a, 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 a um, thing on GIS, um, trying to inform the residents to you know to try to avoid the water, you know, because we have seen persons actually swimming in the water, you know. And so we're trying to uh, educate them not to swim in this water. As we said, it is not very clean, overflowed septic tanks, um, absorption pits, contaminating the water. So it's really not healthy for us to be weeding and swimming in, in this kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Ian Miles, is this kind of flooding typical in the division? Yes, it's a perennial, perennial um, concern. Uh, whenever it rains incessantly, this flooding uh, takes place in Matt because of the low-lying area, it's below sea level, and um, the problem is compounded by McNeil and being surrounded by, by water, by rivers. Uh, one of the problems I'm now hearing, and, uh, you know, I have to speak to it at length, is the fact that a dike would have been constructed um, to the back of McNeil to prevent the Cabarita River from flowing directly into the community. Mm-hmm. I have no understanding that it has been compromised because of human um, you know, behaviors. Mm. They would have taken away the soil for, you know, in an explicit way to sell to other people. And so that in itself would have um, caused the river to flow directly into the community. And that is why the water would have risen that rapidly. And the dike was constructed uh, years ago um, to prevent the Cabarita River from flowing into the community. And um, that, based on what we're getting now, would have been broken, and that is why we saw what transpired now. Um, the water is receding, but it's receding very slowly because we would have had um, weeks of rainfall uh, leading up to to um, the, the storm. Mm-hmm. When I traverse the the Maros going to the ocean, um, within that mile and a half, driving from the main road, going to the ocean, all the Maros, would have seen three feet, uh, three feet and a half, sometimes four feet of water in the Maros. So it, it tells you that the water is not exiting the Maros as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. And that, that is why the water is not um, leaving the community as rapidly as it used to. So McNeil, it's not, it's not, um, it's unique to this situation. Yeah. Unfortunately, this one is the most devastating one I've seen um, since I've been here. Mm-hmm. And that devastation, do you yet have even a preliminary assessment of the cost of the kind of damage that you've seen? Not as yet, because the water is too high in some of the, the mm. areas. Um, to the back of the community, uh, it's it's still impossible. And so telephone communication is, is the only means at this point. Um, today we tried to get the uh, truck from the fire brigade to go in. Uh, that in itself was not successful. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to enter through um, another area and just to use the four-wheel and, and try and navigate that area to go because there's no water on the fan around that side so I can reach um, maybe the first house down the back. Mm. Uh, we have not yet done the assessment, um, but in terms of damages, uh, the MP would have spoken about it. The animals, we have a lot of losses in terms of animals, goats, um, poultry, um, cattle, etc. That is the main stake in terms of farming that is done in that community. The road in itself, um, will, you know, is totally destroyed, I can tell you that. 
Uh, so that, as an infrastructural assessment, is, is, is separate. Um, in terms of, of appliances and, and, and household items, um, persons would have lost um, mattresses and uh, dosing. We can't, I can't say at the moment how many, because all the houses, um, mm. every, well, not every, but almost every house yes. that is on the low line, except a few of them that is on a, a, a hilly interior, that all of them were underwater. I've never seen it like this in my mm. uh, And what is the water situation like in there? Have you been able to get trucking going? Because one of the quickest paths to the disease is lack of running water. Um, no. Uh, truth be told, no. Uh, tomorrow morning when I go in, uh, I will uh, speak to the residents because they would have collected water prior to the storm terms of uh, rainwater harvesting, mm-hmm. but I will speak to to the residents and find out whether or not um, you know they have uh, portable water, and if if not, then the arrangement will be made uh, instantly to ensure that they have uh, clean water to carry on their their normal business. Mm-hmm. And just so I'm clear, Mr. Miles, is it that they are marooned or that certain vehicles can um, cross it? No, the back those to the back. It's, it's, I wouldn't say maroon, yeah. but <laughs> the water is so high, no one is going to risk their vehicle going in that. Okay. Uh, so not even the truck today could go up to that point. Uh-huh. And that is like uh, we, we have maybe half a mile of, of that yeah. going to the back end of the community. But the, most of the houses are um, closer to the front. Mm-hmm. That, those areas are accessible. Mm-hmm. And so we are in constant dialogue and in and out um, there. Uh, having a team out by the front to ensure that the culverts are not blocked. Um, so they are moving up and down that tariff here, ensuring that the debris that comes down is taken out so the water is free-flowing right throughout the day and night. So that is being done as we speak, and that is why the water is receding as it is. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Morris, I heard the councillor there, uh, Mr. Miles, talking about the fact that your poultry has been lost. Are there any concerns that, you know, people might try to sell um, the dead birds or the dead meat? Uh, <laughs> because, you know, you're going to try to recoup the losses somehow. Uh, well, I, I, I would have any report of, of that. But um, residents, people, people, you know, it's, it's not difficult to find what they, the old things are happening because people will, will talk. People are not going to see it. Something like that, and, and not talk. Um, so, uh, not too worried about that. But um, it's something that we have to be mindful of. And um, our officers, they are able to detect when these conditions occur. Mm-hmm. You know, you can also see it from the the, the color of the coloration of the of the animals. Mm-hmm. If, yes, they have died. Normally, the, the the meat would would not look as white as it as it would as should should. Yeah. So, uh, consumers can can detect it as well. So it's, uh, it's not so easy to to, to market, you know. Um, yeah. uh, and speaking of telltale signs, can you essentially inform the listeners uh, what they should be on the lookout if there are any concerns for, say, waterborne illnesses that could be a potential problem? Well, normally, um, the, 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 the symptoms that with there are the signs that we'll see are usually um, people with running belly. Um, gastroenteritis kind of situation. Because most of all waterborne diseases, that's what it, it, it causes. So if we have persons having more than three um, water stools per day, that's a sign for them to visit their health care facility as soon as possible. Don't wait. Don't sit and wait and watch it. But we visit the health facility, uh, you know, and that will, that will also trigger the sentinel site to um, you know, move other other um, areas into the L team for the L team to look at as well. So don't start with if you have having running belly or any, anything like that. With the L L facility. And uh, Councillor Miles, in terms of uh, the residents that have been displaced as a result of the flooding, have you been able to properly find shelter for them? Yeah, um, Matt Nealon is a community, they live neighborly, and uh, kudos to them. Uh, persons would have been accommodating, you know, their one another within the community. And uh, I can tell you this too, over the years, 
they're very, very hesitant in, in moving into shelters. It doesn't matter what. They're at a brave out um, the storm. Um, so yesterday we had uh, seven persons in the shelter there. Because it's not only Matt Neal and that has been directly affected by the flood. And the Bay Road area, the entire Bay Road stretch as well, um, spanning all the way back. And um, now we're having some waters moving through the Maros into the Egypt Gardens community. Um, you know, this, this, this one is, is, is massive. Um, so persons are still in the community in their homes or within the homes of our friends and family members. So that is good. But I want to commend the, the relevant agencies for their quick efforts and the, the assistance um, that they have given thus far. Um, it's, it's really tremendous. Uh, the MLSS team, the Ministry of Health, they were there from the, the, the onset, the first morning. Um, you know, trying to get in to get the assessments done. I want to commend Steve Morris and NFC and, and uh, Macintosh and everyone at that analysis. Um, kudos to you guys as well for coming on board and ensuring that the resources have been distributed in a way in which we have never seen before. Um, so, you know, we are, we are monitoring um, the situation. My only concern now is for those persons who are to the back end of the community. I have not seen some of them, I have not heard from them because of what's happening. We are trying our end of a bit to get whatever it is that can take us in there so that we can get some resources for them around and do the assessment, which is necessary. Yeah. Councillor Ian uh, Miles? I also, uh, I also heard we currently have about 11 persons in the shelter. Um, so, yeah, I and mean, including children. Yeah. Councillor Miles, Mr. Morris, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, and thanks for utilizing this platform to educate um, the residents, especially about the potential illnesses that can arise from this. Thanks. Not a problem. All right, uh, that's the nation's business. A development in the United States, listeners, where African Americans across several U.S. states are receiving text messages saying to them, some of them, now that Trump is president, you have been selected to quote pick